Hello everybody, I'm John, this is JP Strategic Investments, and today we are going to talk about Patriot One Technologies filing their final base shelf prospectus. Now at first glance, this looks like basically just a finalized touched up version of the prospectus that they announced about a month ago or so. But if you look closer, there's actually some really big things that I wanna talk about today, including some information on new contracts and total backlog. So what I'm gonna do here and what I did is I actually went and used, um, some of you guys might be familiar with this, it's called Diff Checker and they have uh, an app that you can you know download onto your desktop or if you want you can use the web-based version and basically what it does is you can upload two documents in this case i uploaded the preliminary short form prospectus that they gave us prior to this and then the recently filed finalized short form prospectus and it will go through and automatically show you where any differences might be. Green is, is added stuff to the new version, which is over here on the left, or I'm sorry, on the right. And um, if there's anything taken away um, th from the old version in the newer version, that will be over here in red. So you can see there's this big chunk over here, and this is what I wanna talk about, added to this new prospectus in green over here. Um, and just so you guys can see it better, I'm actually gonna go over to um, the version here and get to the product section. Um, so right here, this is the first thing that I want to talk about and then we'll get into the actual um, contracts and things like that. So first of all, I do want to talk about uh, some of the things they say with MSG and improvements that they plan on making in the future. So down here, it says, accordingly, the company intends to continue to make developments and modifications to the MSG product throughout fiscal 2022. And they kind of break that down here in this section that I'm gonna read off to you guys. So it says proposed enhancements will include expanding the compatibility of the technology with complementary external monitoring solutions. Um, and, and when it comes to those, what I'm assuming that means is if different venues have maybe off-site monitoring, if they have you know, a web-based or cloud-based type of platform where they can actually monitor the security of their venue, or maybe they have uh, security offer operators with tablets and things like that throughout the stadium or whatever the venue is, just making it easier for them to integrate those types of things with the MSG solution. It also says here, expanding the flexibility of the product to accommodate different end use environments. So with that, that's basically saying, right now we're focusing on these stadiums and, and arenas and things like that. That's kind of what it seems like their main focus is. But obviously they've told us before, they kind of see the product being able to be used in a variety of other different, uh, what would be here, end use environments, being schools, federal buildings, um, you know, maybe even things like airports and things like that. So basically what they're saying is future plans include expanding the flexibility of the product to increase the total addressable market basically. And then the next thing they're expanding the integration opportunities with other technology offered by the company. They've done that really well so far with VRS in the last six months or so with different things they've announced. Improving analysis specificity, so that's obviously making um, the analysis more accurate. So for example, right now they just have the red circle that shows where a product might be, maybe improving the accuracy of that red circle, maybe even something like actually alerting what the object might be, as if whether it's a handgun or whether it's a knife, certain things like that. And then the last thing there is just general performance and usability improvements. So probably things like increasing accuracy and, and, and whatnot. So those are some of the things that I thought were important that were added to this final prospectus. Just gives us some extra context as far as what they plan to do, what's in the roadmap for MSG. As far as VRS, they kind of give a little bit of the same thing. They kind of do say though that most of the work on VRS is, is pretty much complete. It's pretty much, it seems like, where they want it to be. You can see it says here down at the bottom, the company does not anticipate investing additional research and development efforts into these modules, talking about 
uh, the different modules of VRS, whether it's VRS weapons detection, health and safety, and temperature detection. So seems like VRS is really where they want it to be right now. They don't foresee any, um, at least in the short term future, they don't foresee any improvements that they're either working on or going to have to make with that product, which is good because to me, it seems like Patriot One and, and, and Peter, with how they've approached the MSG platform and tailor making it to these customers, it seems they're really, really focused on improving anything they can to make it more tailored to meet the customer's needs. And so while you could take this as well, you know, the company's kind of getting lazy here, they don't want to actually improve things, that's a possibility. But I think it's more likely that this just means that the technology, the software, the VRS is exactly where they want it to be right now. So that's a good thing to me. And the last thing here before we get into the contracts, they do touch on some of the funding and related grants and things like that. Um, they talk about Raytheon and different, um, different other things. I think the main important thing here to touch on is they do say that they don't expect to receive any more COVID relief funding from the Canadian government. So in the last few quarters, we've kind of seen anywhere from two or 300,000 to maybe just over $1 million in COVID relief funding um, from the Canadian government. Looks like they don't expect that to continue at least at the moment. Who knows, with Omicron, we might see that come back, but honestly, I think it's best that it doesn't because if it does come back, that would likely mean that there's other hurdles that uh, Patriot One would have to deal with with different COVID policies and lockdowns and not being able to do business the way they want to do it. Um, so with that said, let's get into the really important part here. The really exciting part, in my opinion, as long as I'm reading this right, and I believe I am, um, you guys can let me know in the comments below if you think this reads any differently. But that is this section here where it says discussion of contracts the company has signed that are in the pipeline. And let me see if I can make this just a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, yeah, that should work. Uh, so it says here, the first line, I'm just going to read this for you guys. The company currently has signed agreements with 12 customers representing 2.7 million in total contract value for platform sales and seven projects representing 3 million in total contract value for extract service contracts. The platform sales include a combination of proprietary hardware and software as well as service maintenance fees and are charged either through an upfront fee arrangement or monthly subscription fee under a three year term. The company has a solid sales pipeline with well-qualified opportunities, which is rapidly growing in its target markets. So the reason this is so exciting is if you look at their last earnings report in this little uh, graph or, or chart, they kind of break this down here for us. This is as of October 31st, um, 2021, right? In this chart, they only have platform revenue backlog of one million dollars okay or just over one million dollars and as far as extract revenue they only have about two million dollars there giving us a total backlog of three million well this seems to be saying basically in the ne in the current quarter that we're in which is november december january they've signed an additional 1.7 million in pat scan or platform sales and an additional million dollars in extract, which would bring that total backlog for each of those to the 2.7 we're seeing here and the three, uh, three million or so, right? That would mean that in the current quarter alone, they've almost tripled their platform backlog, right? Or their PAT scan, what used to be, what they used to call PAT scan backlog. That is huge. If I'm reading this correctly, and again, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, if you, if you think this reads a different way, this tells me that basically so far in the current quarter, which we still have almost a month left, they've already added an additional 1.7 million in PAT scan or platform sales. So this to me is pretty huge. This is kind of the main thing that I saw from this prospectus. Again, let me know if you're seeing something different or reading this different. Other than this, it kind of just looks like a reiteration of what they had given us before. Looks like they're still planning to raise at least some amount of money, maybe not the entire 50 million, 
but they're definitely putting in a plan to be able to do so. So leave your questions and comments below. Other than that, I will see you guys next time and have a great day.